this podcast I'm going to talk about a class of molecules that are very important in human body function, namely proteoglycans and glycosoaminoglycans, better known as GAG molecules. Here comes the simple summary for your exams. A GAG molecule is a really big molecule that is electrically charged. It sucks up water, holds onto the water and lets go of the water when it needs to. And it's important for normal function. These are a group of complex molecules which were involved in various processes in the body. All of these three photographs will include a relevance to GAG molecules. So they are important in embryo development. They are the reason that a frog feels slimy. And they are the reason that our synovial joints work so well because they are quite slippery molecules. If you studied A-level biology, you'll recognize this diagram here of a plasma membrane or a phospholipid bilayer. You've got protein channels, which are the purple things. You've got pale blue phosphate heads and you've got lipid tails, which line up in a fluid mosaic model. The green things on the top that look like TV aerials are just that. They are receptors for other signals and they are a form of proteoglycan. If you are struggling to understand something, try thinking about what life would be like without it. So here's a group of cells in the body. They could be any cells. If there's no cushioning or lubrication between them, very quickly things are going to start to go wrong. And in the next video, I've got an illustration of that kind of situation where there's no shock absorber or lubrication between the molecules. If we imagine these to be cartilage cells, the pale blue dots, we need a matrix to hold them together, which is outside the cells. In medicine, outside is extra. So the cloud that I've drawn here is an extracellular matrix. And this is where we find most of the connective tissue molecules, such as proteoglycans and GAG molecules. Proteoglycans are quite complex, large molecules, and they have the ability to absorb up to a thousand times their own weight in water. That's useful in tissues that need to be hydrated. So the prime example is articular cartilage. One of the side effects of immobility or a lack of movement of a joint or aging is a lack of the ability of these proteoglycans to absorb water. And when the cartilage starts to dry out, it very quickly starts to become osteoarthritic. This is what a typical proteoglycan would look like. We have a core protein and hanging off that we have numerous gag chains making a complex mucopolysaccharide molecule. In terms of what matters to physios, it's basically the lubrication function that matters, but they are also thought to be involved in wound and tissue healing, cellular proliferation and general shock absorption in the body. And they're also found in muscles, tendons, skin and ligaments as well. Here are six major classes of proteoglycans, keratin sulfate, chondroitin sulfate, dermatin sulfate, heparin sulfate, heparin and hyaluronon. Because these molecules are able to absorb huge amounts of water, that means that articular cartilage can soak up the water very well and become enlarged and very buoyant really and able to absorb shock. 
and then when we stand on our joints or put compressive load on them that water gets squeezed out the joints fit perfectly and then when we take the weight off them the water gets sucked back in again so this has got this dynamic pump system of water in and out of a joint this graphic shows you the three different zones of articular cartilage, superficial, transitional, and deep. And it also shows you the arrangement of collagen fibers, proteoglycan content, and chondrocyte morphology. So you can see that in the superficial zones, the collagen is horizontal. In the transitional zone, it's random. And the deep zone is vertical. This gives the cartilage a great ability to withstand stresses and strains from all directions. The proteoglycan content in the surface layer is very low. It's much higher in the intermediate and lower layers because that's where the shock absorption really takes place. The chondrocytes, on the other hand, the actual cartilage cells, are higher in number in the superficial zone and they're flattened. The end result of this complex morphology is this. This is how your joints are able to withstand stress. These people can bounce up and down. The inflatable will deform, reform, and go back to its normal shape at the end of the day. If you imagine letting some of the air uh, out of the lilo in the previous photo, that's what osteoarthritis is. You start to lose these proteoglycan gag molecules the tissue is therefore less able to absorb water, it's therefore drier, it desiccates, it can't take stresses and strains quite so well, and you end up with osteoarthritis. Gag molecules aren't only found in cartilage, they're also found in other soft tissues as well, such as tendon, ligament, muscle and skin and they also appear to affect the mechanical properties of tendons, for example. They're certainly involved in the ability of a tendon to transmit lateral force between adjacent fibrils of the tendon, and they form cross-links between the collagen molecules and give the tendon additional strength. So if we lose these tissues through immobility or inactivity, the strength of the tissue will be decreased, another reason why active movement and exercise are important. Gag molecules are not just found in an MSK setting. You may have heard of heparin. Heparin is an anticoagulant. If a patient has a DVT or a deep vein thrombosis, the treatment is to break the clot up. And heparin is a molecule which is a gag chain, which is very slippery. And one of the reasons it may work is by gradually breaking down the clot and enabling reabsorption of the embolus. So all this is really interesting, but so what? Why do you need to know it? So talking about cartilage, the forces between two articulating bones are very complex and it's very difficult to analyze them experimentally in a real life situation. In other words, in an in vivo experiment. In vivo means in a living body. In vitro means in glass. So it's very difficult to reproduce a joint in a living situation. But we do know that cartilage in a living subject is subjected to compressive and shearing forces under normal movements. And we now seem to believe that these two forces are very important in maintaining the proportions of gag molecules in our cartilage. If we, if we take away the shearing and compressive forces, the cartilage effectively starts to die. Um, and we've found that it doesn't take much, just a few newtons of load in animal studies are enough to maintain cartilage health. So that's another reason why it's important that we go for early but appropriate weight bearing and activity. And it's all to do with maintaining the said principle really, the specific adaptation to impose demand. If we ask a joint to do things, it will repay us by making itself able to do that. If we don't do things, these gag molecules will disappear and the joint will be able to not withstand stresses and strains quite so well. This is a study that was undertaken in animal cartilage and in the two groups of the study, the top line here was where the joints were subjected to appropriate load 
and the amount of gag molecules stayed reasonably constant but in the static model in other words where the joint wasn't moved you can see how within the course of a week or two the amount of gag molecules starts to decrease quite rapidly it will increase if force is reintroduced but I don't think it will go back to normal if we understand how connective tissue functions we've got a much better chance of being able to fix it when it goes wrong so it's possible that we can now look into synthetic gag molecules as a way of easing pain in osteoarthritis for example and it's also possible that we're now looking into coatings for joint replacements which mimic the effect of these gag chains which keep friction down to the minimum there are studies that have been done which look at the temperature of artificial joints and the temperature can become quite alarmingly high after repeated activity which is obviously going to cause trauma to an artificial joint which won't regenerate so if we can somehow use a similar structure to a gag molecule to coat the lining of a prosthesis that's got to be useful here comes the simple summary for your exams a gag molecule is a really big molecule that is electrically charged it sucks up water holds onto the water and lets go of the water when it needs to and it's important for normal function